Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, we have a great topic to discuss with you today, uh, a very new and relevant topic called BIMI. I'm joined today with my lovely colleagues, Matthew Vernhout and LB, and we are going to break down this conversation talking about what is BIMI, the history of BIMI, a little bit of the technical specs and requirements for BIMI, and where you can go to learn more. So with that, um, Matt, tell us what what is BIMI for those that may not be familiar. Yeah, so BIMI is like this new kind of cool um, add-on, if you will, to go along with, uh, you know, as a, almost as a reward for good authentication. So if you have good practices around SPF, around DCAM, and around your DMARC policies where you actually add an enforcement, uh, you can uh, activate a BIMI record in your DNS and, and the, the brand indicator for message identification logo, uh, which we'll, we'll show a little bit later, will um, we'll, we'll appear in the, the email UI. Right now, it's uh, only at Verizon Media, but uh, it's coming soon to a Gmail app near you uh, sometime in 2020. Um, so uh, that's really the basis is it's uh, almost a, a, you know, a reward for having strong authentication practices for your brand. And is it is it a authentication standard? Is it a is it a, a, a um, like a like ha, what? Where does it live? And and how do you actually yeah create this thing called BIMI? Well, it's not an authentication standard on its own, yeah. if you will. It, it sort of layers on top of our standard authentication solutions around SPF and around DCAM, um, and it it works in partnership with. Uh, those three sort of technologies, you know, even DMARC's not necessarily an authentication solution. It's a it's a policy to say, please take an enforcement action um, if my authentication fails. And then BIMI basically is if my authentication is really good, you know, put my logo in the UI. So it's sort of a, an add on and an addition to uh, that kind of solution. I would probably say it's kind of like a capstone that provides a tangible benefit to marketers. It gives them increased branding um, so that they can make sure their emails look the way they want. It, you know, it solves it solves what's become kind of a problem in the marketplace of there are like a thousand and one different ways to get your logo to display <laughs> somewhere, you know, you have to go set it up here, there, and everywhere. Instead, it says, how about we have just one place to do that? That'd be great. That's great, yeah. It's a standard, right? Do it once and see the benefit everywhere it's supported. And, th and this is a fairly new topic, right? Or, or, or a new standard. Can you tell me a little bit about how this idea yeah. came to fruition? So it's, it's been around a year or two at this point. Um, and it's a, a collaboration effort between uh, Verizon Media, Google, um, Valley Mail, Agari's involved, uh, LinkedIn was involved. Um, so they've sort of come together and said, how do we, how do we entice people to do better authentication? Um, and then the solutions sort of come out from that and it's, we'll give you, we'll give you the reward of your logo if you do things right. Um, you know, and, and like I said earlier, like Yahoo's or Yahoo Verizon Media, um, it's in the, the Yahoo mobile app, it's in the, the Yahoo web app. Um, so that's where you can see it now. Um, and they're really the first and they've really been pushing the effort uh, to get this standard. Um, and then, yeah, just recently Google announced that they're going to launch in beta. So that's pretty exciting. And, right. um, you know, when the, the biggest email platform on the planet says we're going to try something. People pay attention. People really pay attention. So that's why we've spent so much time, you know, building tools to help clients and, and walking clients through getting configured and setting it up. So I want to break this down a little bit more and, and help our audience understand the, the dependencies and the requirements uh, for BIMI. So LB, can you talk about what are the, the requirements in order for a marketer or brand to take advantage of this new feature? Yeah, absolutely. There are a few. Um, you have to have authentication set up. You have to have SPF set up. You need to have your DKIM. Um, and then you have to have a DMARC policy set to either quarantine or reject. Um, which means you also have to, you know, have everything aligning properly for DMARC um, so that you can then implement BIMI. Um, so it's definitely, yeah, as, as Matt said, it's definitely an incentive in terms of tangible branding, uh, you know, and customer facing branding to have marketers secure the email channel in a way that benefits everyone. Um, and you also, there are a few other requirements. Um, you have to send commercial mail. You have to send a significant volume 
of mail. You have to send enough uh, to have developed a positive, and you have to have de developed a positive sender reputation. Um, essentially, if you know a just the same now as when you send an email to Gmail, if they decide they don't like your sender reputation for whatever reason, they're not going to put it in the inbox. Um, they can kind of make that same determination of, oh, well, I'm not going to show the logo because, you know, I don't think you qualify for whatever magical reason, <laughs> you know, lives inside their algorithm. Yeah. So it's, it's it almost sounds like, Matt, going back to what you were talking about is there's you talked about kind of the benefits of what makes this unique and attractive. And LB, you mentioned that uh, a lot of mailbox providers have offered something similar to to this concept, but it's it, it hasn't been universal. It hasn't been across the industry. And Bemi, it sounds like, is one of these uh, standards that is it literally is standardizing it across mailbox providers. It's allowing brands to do it once and have benefits at participating mailbox providers. And also kind of that, that dual edge of, of additional security, right? Because it requires DMARC uh, at enforcement, but also clearly the marketing and the impression benefit uh, from a brand's perspective. Yeah, and, and the idea is you should be able to, in the end, determine, you know, if a logo shows up and then a logo doesn't show up, ideally the consumer will recognize the message without the logo is potentially not as trustworthy. Right. Um, you know, our clients that have implemented BIMI, we have seen, um, you know, not I wouldn't say significant giant lift in open rates and click rates, but it's not zero either, right? So there is certainly- We can only help, in my Yeah, there's certainly benefit for doing this. Um, you know, and, and in the, the scale of domain size, footprint size, you know, Yahoo and, and AOL and Verizon, they're, they're significantly sized, but, you know, they are not the big, biggest fish right now. So they are, they are going to move the needle um, but they're not going to move the needle as much as someone like a Gmail. And I, I would say in the way that a lot of these providers have kind of treated like SPF and DKIM are kind of de facto requirements now. Like that's something you're just expected to have. Um, BIMI is really not designed to be another authentication parameter right. that you just have to have sitting right. on top. You know, it, it's definitely designed to be something beneficial for everyone. Matt, I want to ask you if uh, if you could show um, show us and show our audience how to create a BIMI record, and if you can walk through kind of the different aspects of what's involved or entailed in that record and what those various aspects mean. Sure. Yeah. So there's there's a couple of flags, or I call them flags, but they're what they're parameters uh, within the BIMI record, and it's it's very similar. So anyone who set up a DKIM record will sort of understand the structure. So um, you know, right now the selector uh, as much like a DKIM selector, uh, is default. That's the, the one that we've used at least during all the trial periods and such, default. Uh, and then there's underscore BIMI. Uh, and then you get into the domain name. So that you're basically setting up what looks very much like a domain key record, except it's, it's going to be a, a series of URLs. So on the screen here, we have um, the BIMI wizard created by 250OK. And, uh, you know, we allow a preview to show um, of what it will look like when, when it would show in a UI. Uh, so we allow you to change the friendly from, put your domain name in, uh, and then put your logo and where you've hosted that logo um, in. The BIMI selector, like I said, is default, so we've locked that in for now. At some point in the future, that is expected to change. So you could have different logos for different types of traffic. You could have a transactional logo versus a commercial logo, uh, and if, if it gets to the point where they're going to support consumer one-to-one -one style messaging, then you may be able to, to go down to that level as well. But um, as of right now, default is, is that. So put everything in the UI like we've shown here, click on the Save Settings button, and then down below we have the actual record. So this is what you would have created. It has what the host name needs to be. So you take that, you go to your DNS provider, put that record in, then it has the DNS text copy, which has the version, so BIMI. Uh, it has the logo location for where the URL is going to be uh, pointing to the image. And then it has uh, an A record. An A record is not currently being used, um, but it's going to be for um, like a verification or some type of certificate uh, that will come as part of the BIMI standard as it moves beyond sort of the beta launch, if you will, um, to allow for a brand to say, yes, I went and I got certified that this is my logo 
this is my brand, this is my domain. And then there's a, a, even a, an additional security check so that you don't have somebody who is um, phishing or trying to spoof a brand and use Bimmy as something to say, you should really trust me because they won't be able to get this right certificate. They won't be able to get the right validation for that. So let's take a look, if you don't mind, at some actual examples of, of customers and brands that have successfully implemented Bimmy uh, and show what this actually looks like in, in the real world. Sure. So we've, we've written about this on our, our site as well. So we have a couple articles as well. Um, but when looking through, um, we've gone through the process with a couple of clients and we've chosen two here. So this is uh, eHarmony on the left and, and Furniture Row on the right. Um, and in, in both cases, you can see this is what the UI for the Yahoo mobile app looks like. Um, so you see the from address or the from friendly from the subject line, pre-header, and then you see the logo next to the message. Uh, they look really nice. Like as a consumer, if I were to look at this, I'm t I know those logos. I'm going to trust them. Then when you actually open the message, we see the repeating logo, the repeating from demand or from address, friendly from. Uh, and then along with the rest of the message, and you see the repeating of the, the logo. So um, it's really obvious to consumers who those brands are. Yeah, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? right? And it's, it's such a strong signal and engagement for an average consumer to see the logo. So yeah, it's significantly stronger than um, potentially even the default um, logo or default avatar that you would see in something like the Yahoo mobile client where it might just show you the initials of the sender right. with some sort of random initial text that has been chosen by the, the platform. Uh, last up, so this is what uh, the inbox view looks like. So when you're on the website, um, you'll see on the, the left-hand side of the screen, it's the friendly from. It doesn't have the logo, but once you open the message, the logo is there, and then the logo also shows in the address card. So you, you do get it in two places as well. Um, and I would expect over time, the, the inbox will, will evolve and, and include the logo as well. This is great. So I think, I think for, for most marketers and brands that maybe not be familiar or maybe have heard of Bimmy, uh, this is available now. There's no cost to this. It's out of beta. This is something that marketers can take advantage of today. So with that, um, LB, where, where would where would someone go to learn more information about Bimmy or uh, perhaps understand and keep up on news about uh, which mailbox providers are supporting Bimmy and how to get started? Um, I, there's definitely the Bimmy website, uh, bimmygroup.org. Um, that's their new official website. You can check it out there, get more information. Um, they have like a list of the logos there. You can also, you know, check a variety of blogs. I know some very good ones that uh, everyone can check out. And uh, that's going to that are going to be reporting on kind of what's new with Bimmy. I mean, I, I think that the best thing about Bimmy is, you know, modern marketing platforms are all about giving you um, feedback and control so that marketers can control as much as possible about the user experience. And pretty much any time you can give, you know, these inbox providers like Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, et cetera, an explicit ex instruction of what you want them to do. Um, it's always better to go ahead and provide that versus letting them kind of decide on their own what they want to pick. And yeah, because we, we've seen that where, you know, currently one of the providers will choose a logo thinking it's the right logo for a business and it's not, you know, um, which I think is worse for a brand. Yeah. Having the wrong logo show up next to your email. And no logo at and all. And no logo at all. So putting the control back in the domain owner's point of view to say, here's my logo. If you're going to display one, please display this one, right? It's a request. Um, just like DMARC is a request to say, please reject mail if it fails authentication. If the service provider feels they know better, maybe they won't. But that's, again, it's, it's a collaborative effort between the sending side and the receiving side. And the sending side is giving that indicator of, here's what I would like you to do. Here's my logo. Here's what I can provide you. Here's my authentication. Please do with it the right things. Yep. Well, Seth, this has been extremely informative. Uh, I hope for our audience as well that this is something that uh, is helpful for you in understanding or learning a little bit more about this new standard in BIMI. And uh, thank you for watching. We, we look forward to seeing you on another expert series video.